Hi, this is Anna, and this is Check It at the Round Table, where we discuss movies, books, music, and stuff. Today we are discussing money, meltdowns, and how it will all be okay. <laughs> so, a few days ago, one evening, I was having a bit of a meltdown. I was feeling like things were not going well. Everything was seeming to just go kind of ballistically wrong. And I was like, you know, this is not how it should be. And I was really thinking of reinventing my life entirely in that moment. I was like, you know, I could do this, this, and this, and that would change everything. But I'm not sure how that would work. But let me give you the backstory. So this January, actually, no, we're going to start in December. Because actually, let's go back one more month to November. So in November, I started looking for health insurance because I'm living abroad. And I did get health insurance. It was a struggle to get the payments to get sorted for foreign currency, given I had American bank accounts. We got that all sorted, but it cost me a lot. Over like four months, I have to pay about one grand. That's a lot of money for honest. I'm like, but once I pay that, I'm done for the year. And I know that if, you know, something cataclysmic happens, I'm covered. So I'm going, it's totally worth it. But it is a lot of money for Anna. So we had that. Then we also had, I got sick twice with different kinds of infections and had to go to the doctor. And that cost not very much money, but it did take me time off work. I couldn't work as much because I was tired and not feeling well. So we had that. The other thing is I was briefly in a relationship, which was great, but that also took time away from work and I didn't work as much and therefore... I didn't have as much at the end of that, but it was worth it because it was like it was a good relationship while it lasted. So there you go. So we had that compounded situation. And then we hit January. Ain't no new year. I don't know. But I went to the dentist and they're like, you have at least seven cavities or at least seven places in your mouth where there was a cavity or a filling fell out. At least four of them were fillings fell out or went bad. I'm like, four to six. I can't remember which. But anyway, when it was all said and done, I had 11 either cavities or refillings to do. And even in another country, that's a lot. And that's expensive. Like another $400. Now, I have friends that live in Korea and they're like, Anna, we went in for three fillings and it's a grand here. And I'm going, okay, I'm keeping this in perspective. But still, when you take, I was paying installments on my insurance of 300 about, and then I have to pay 400 for my teeth. And I really cannot wait on my teeth because when they cleaned it and got all the fillings somewhat less infected, I guess, I don't know what you call it, the teeth started to hurt. And I'm like, I can't handle the teeth being hurting like they are so i went in and got the fillings fixed the last ones were yesterday actually and it took like literally four visits to the dentist maybe five i can't remember i lost track the other thing that happened this month was i finally got my driver's license i've never had a driver's license before but i passed my test i will get it in february but that costs like another 120 Plus another, uh, what do you call it? I had to take drive lessons. So that was about 150 something, 160, let's say. So all told, that's a lot of money in January that I had to go to dentist, driving school, or insurance. I'm like, that's like a lot for Anna. So I was sitting here two days ago looking at my savings, looking at my checking account going, it has not been this low in a very long time. Now, the good news is, is I have another account with money for my retirement, but I don't want to touch that money that I have for retirement. And I also have a grant and a scholarship that I had money left over from, so I'll be getting quite a bit of money in mid-February. So I'm like, it will all be okay. But at the end of January here, I was like, man, I'm in my 30s. I do not have a lot in savings. My checking account is really low right now. I'm like, and 
I have to pay taxes, which is about a grand here in the next few months. And I have to pay um, for my visa to be renewed. And I'm sitting here going, that's another, you know, about a grand. And I'm going, when I count for my education and classes and the visa, it's like, it's expensive. So I'm sitting here going, you know, and I'm trying to find somewhere to rent that's a little less expensive. Like, if I could get a little rent, I mean, my rent's low, but if I could get it a little lower, that would be better for my finances. So I'm sitting here going, Anna, you are, you moved abroad to save money and you haven't really saved money, but you haven't actually actually spent a lot more money either, but this hasn't worked out the way you planned and it's kind of a failure and you need to rethink things. I'm going, now when I think about rethinking things, I'm not thinking about moving back to the States because I'm going, the situation there would be way worse for me financially than it is here. Because I'm like, here, I can make it work even on a crazy month like this month. There, it would not be as easy to make it work on a crazy month like this month. And I know that. But I was sitting here going, having a bout of a meltdown, thinking, you know, maybe I should just do the option where I stay here for like three months, go to another country for three months, put everything in storage, and rethink the whole darn thing. Plus, I'm going, I'm not doing well at my language studies either. It's like, I've been here since May of last year, and I'm only on at less than five of the language class school. I'm going, I am trying, but it is hard. Oh my goodness. So, two nights ago was not a good night for Anna. The only thing that was good about it was we had last twilight air, but again, that was kind of a um, a bittersweet ending because I'm going, they didn't apologize for nothing in that. And Mock, he didn't really have anything to apologize for in Anna's opinion. But anyway, that's a whole other podcast. But I'm just saying, Friday night for Anna was a bit of a battle. Plus, I'm going, I think it would have been better, but my monthly arrived. And I'm like, I am a perfectly calm, non-emotional person almost the entire month. But when my monthly arrives, I might have one of these little meltdowns, which no one else really knows I'm having. But I sit there and go, I'm trying to control this. And it's very hard for me to control and get my brain around. I need I need chocolate. I need to pull the tea. And I need to breathe quietly in my room, away from other people so I don't bug them. <laughs> So I'm going, you know, the 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 joys of having high functioning autism. I don't know. But anyway, however, after sleeping on it and waking up the next day and actually going out and getting my license, I passed my exam, going out and getting the rest of my teeth fixed. I actually went out and did a tiny bit of shopping too. I was like, you know, I need to reframe this whole thing. Because the truth is. This is not a failure. I'm going, you know, I have no debt whatsoever at all. No debt. I mean, unless you count my monthly credit card, which I pay off at the end of the month, which I'm not counting. So, because I'm going, that builds my credit. And that's kind of, you know, I'm going, why would I count that? Because I pay it off every month. So now I'm going, I have no debt except for my monthly credit card. I have my tuition entirely paid for to go back to college and get my associates in business. And they've told me that if I want, I could get my bachelor's in business and it would be paid for. So I'm like, that is a huge boon. Most people don't have that. I'm going, so I really think I need to sit there and go, who's up on both those things? And on the savings and checking being really low for Anna. I'm going, I had enough to pay my rent. I had enough to pay for food. I had enough to pay for all the crazy medical that came up in the last two months, actually four months with the two infections before the dental crisis. And I had money to pay for insurance, which I'm going, half of the world does not have insurance. Did you guys know that? I Googled it today. I'm going, I, I mean, I Googled it a while back and I'm like, half the world doesn't have insurance. So I'm like, those are all things that are taken care of. I'm like, this is a success. I might not have a lot in savings, but I have enough to cover everything and have a bit left over. And that is a success. And by the middle of February, it will all be okay again. So I'm like, there we go. And as for the taxes, I'm like, 
Yes, that's coming up. Yes, they're due in April. Will I have all the money in April? I'm going, I will probably have it, but I'm going to set up a payment plan because I do not want to have over half my savings disappear because I owe a grand in taxes. Plus, I think once they look at the taxes, they're going to go, I not only made this and we think she owes this. So I'm like, you know, I'll let them reconfigure everything too and see if I calculated right because I'm guessing I didn't because taxes are not my strong suit. So I'm like, at the end of the day, that will be taken care of too. And then we have like the, the visa thing. And I'm like, you know, I found out yesterday, uh, yeah, I think it was two days ago, I have to leave the country and come back when my visa renews anyway. So I'm going, you know, I'm going to take a trip. I'm probably going to go to Taiwan in the summer. Not because the weather's going to be fabulous. Everyone says the weather's terrible in Taiwan in the summer. I'm going, I've always wondered, what is the weather like in Taiwan since being there? So in, in the summer, so I'm going, I will go to Taiwan in the summer. I will pick up some things from a friend there. And I will come back to where I'm living and I will get the visa in you. The other thing I realized is I'm going, this is not a rush deal because I can come back on a tourist visa. I can get an extension if I want because the people are very nice, the immigration office. And they're going, that gives me at least about 60 to 90 days to come up with the extra money that I need for the visa. So like, say I get to July and I don't have the $1,200 for a visa. I'm like, I will go to Taiwan. I can be there for a while. I can come back. If I wanted to, I could put things in storage here at a friend's house or in a storage unit, and I could come back to it. It is not the end of the world. So I'm like, you know, if I feel like I'm having a meltdown, the best thing to do is probably to just stop the train and to then go and sleep so that I get some time to think about things. I don't know why I always do better when I sleep on things. And I'm going, then I can approach it more calmly, more rationally the next morning when there are not wild ponies moving about my brain, you know, at night, like it sometimes happens very rarely, but sometimes and two nights ago was one of the nights. But anyway, I'm going, this is not a failure. Now, I really thought when I moved abroad, I was like, I will save so much money. I will have so much in savings. It will be bedazzling, as it were. But the thing is, I wasn't counting on is I have gotten sick several times since moving abroad. Now, I would have gotten sick if I had been in America. And I did have COVID three times when I lived in the States, which has made it so my immune system is rather depleted. The other thing is, is I do not make as much money as I made in the States. My income about went to half. So I'm going, you know, you did save a lot, Anna, but your income is half of what you used to make. Now, is my life better? Is my life calmer? Is my life more at peace than it was when I lived in the States? Yes, it is. And it's not because the States was bad and living in Asia is good at all. It is just that for me, living in the States was more stressful just because of the economy, because of the, the, the polarization, because of the safety issues. I'm going, living abroad, I don't have to deal with those kinds of things hardly ever unless i go to vietnam then the safety issue is kind of yeah, yeah. but you know i'm not going to go to vietnam but the thing is sorry <laughs> the thing is it's all taken care of i say here and i realized today i was going you know you had enough to take care of everything that came up that is amazing, considering every freaking thing that came up in the last few months. I'm going, the insurance, the being sick, the having to take time off work because you're sick, the um, dental crises, the driver's license costs. I'm going, there was enough to cover everything. There's not a lot left over, but again, there was enough to cover everything. And whenever anything has come up, that has happened since moving abroad because the cost of living is less there has been enough to cover everything and that i think is the the life lesson now 
the thing is, is as time progresses, there will be more. It's like I realized yesterday, I don't know why. It's like my brain works really slow on things. It's like I realized I was like, if I go, or actually two days ago again, this was part of the meltdown, but I realized that it will take me eight years to get my bachelor's at my current rate of study. And I graduated with my associates next year. So I'm going, by the time I'm in my mid 40s, I will have my bachelor's or my early 40s, actually. But I'm like, that's a long time. And I want to adopt my kiddos before I'm 40. So I'm like, how am I going to do my half schedule of bachelor's work and have the kiddos all at once? I'm like, that was, that was another part of the world that I'm going, I don't know how that's all going to work out. I don't know how I'm going to do all this. I'm going to juggle the balls of bachelor's at work and the joys of having the kiddos are good. I don't know how to handle all that at once. Because I'm like, my plan is to get my associates and then I can start working in probably about double my income. So that will be fabulous. I'm like, you know, that will be nice to be able to double my income will be very, very good. But if I go on for my bachelor's, which is paid for, I can have better job opportunities in many, many countries. Plus, I don't mean it weird, but I did have some people in my life when I was a kid who told me, oh, you can never get your bachelor's. And I'm like, I could have gotten my bachelor's, but I was busy taking care of family, trying to advance my previous career. I'm like, I didn't have time to do the bachelor's then. But now I have time and I'm going, wouldn't it be nice to get the bachelor's after the people said I couldn't? I mean, no offense, I'm going, tell me I can't do something for stupid reasons and I will probably do it. <laughs> I don't know. I'm a nice person, but there is a side of me that, that is that way. But at the end of the day, I'm like, you had enough. It will get easier as time progresses. The other thing is, is that I've realized recently I'm going, I don't really like living by myself. I thought I would, but I was like, you know, I did the empty nest thing when Bob um, started her new life. And I'm like, you know, that was okay. It was very difficult to worry, but I'm going, now I don't have to worry about having to deal with that as much when my kids are grown up. I'm like, although I do hope with my kids, I'm like, if they want to live in the same house as me, I'm totally okay with it. If they don't, I'm totally okay with that too. If they want to bring their significant other and we have a big group house, I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> that would be great. I think that was one of the things I did like about the end of last trial. I'm like, we have poor Jai and Knight and the little cute girl. And we have Day and Mock and their mom. And they all kind of live together i'm like why don't more people do that if they get along i mean no offense i'm like that is pretty cool if they don't i think it's distance is best but you know if they do that's pretty fun but moving on but i was like it's going to get easier but one of the things i'm going to do hopefully is i will i'm hoping to get a like two to three bedroom house that doesn't cost any more than my current rental but that then i could have a roommate or two. The only problem is I've been trying to figure out how to find a roommate because I put up like a Facebook ad saying, is there anyone who wants to have a roommate? Um, I don't smoke. I don't drink. I'm not going to be bringing strange people home. I have excellent references. And I've been getting like the world's freaking weirdest messages and comments. I took down my post because I'm like, you know, where I come from, when we say we want a platonic roommate just to, you know, have as a roommate, we really do mean that. But apparently there are people that don't think you mean that, and I'm really tired of blocking them. So anyway, I'm like, I do plan on getting a roommate one of these days, which will half my rent, and that will be very, very helpful. Or maybe third my rent, depending if I get a three-bedroom. So I'm like, that will be helpful and that will help to mitigate some of the cost factor that I've been dealing with lately, but we'll see about that. But the main point is after the meltdown calmed and stilled, there was enough. It's not a failure. It's a success because having literally see about 
400, 300, 200. I mean, having almost a grand of unexpected bills come out in one month and having enough to cover them in addition to my living expenses, I think that's a win. Now, it's not maybe the best of wins because there wasn't a lot left over, but still it was a win. And I think we need to count the wins. Check it at the round table. Bye.